Hi, welcome to Spry Whimsy. This is going to be part two of making a vessel with a resist. If you haven't seen part one, go back, look at my videos. You'll find that one. I'll probably put a link in the description of, for part one. And basically, it takes over three hours to make a vessel. And I have sped things up, but still the first video, first half of it was a half an hour almost. I figured if I can't push it any longer than that. So this is part two. Please enjoy. All right, so there's our flat piece of felt. Started out here uh, with the pre-felts on top of our fading color. Now our next step is to basically drain it a little bit. So I'm going to take this, roll it up gently. It is just sopping wet right now. Bring it over to the sink and just gently squeeze out a whole lot of extra water. But I also want to be very gentle. I don't want to just destroy everything I've done. But there's a lot of water in here in that process. So I want to make sure everything was wet along the way. Everything stayed where I put it. But it's too much to do a good job of felting. Back out, roll that. And that's where we're gonna get started from. So now that I got this put together, the two sides, it's already starting to crinkle up a little bit, which is kind of surprising. But I'm gonna start with a rolling process. And with something this big, I just want to make sure I can overlap, roll over like that. Grab my pool noodle, roll it up. So it has a larger diameter. And starting gently, start rolling. Now, each time I do this, I'm not going to do more than, if I do more than 20, I start to see too much of a shift. So I'm just going to do. 10 or 15 rolls here, gently. Unroll it. Everything back where it belongs. Rotate it. Kind of play with that direction a little bit. Make sure I have enough to cover most of it. So by folding it over, I'm actually using these bubbles to massage it on both sides at the same time. And I can stop a little short here because as I roll this, it's going to come down and cover that up. And then roll another 10 or 15 times. Now you note I don't take the time to tie it off because the time it takes to tie that off, I'd be unrolling it and re-rolling it again anyway. It's loose in here and that's okay. If it gets out of control, well then just stop and redo it. Especially when it's this big. There's a lot of fiber in there, a lot of moisture in here still. I'll squeeze out more moisture as I go. But first I wanna make sure everything is set into place. Let's actually back this over. I don't want too much. And then I'm just going to keep repeating this for a while, and I'll probably drain it out at some point too.
All right. Yeah, it's about ready to make a cut here. I'm not going to fully remove the uh, resist yet, but I'm going to at least make sure I can start working this top edge once I cut it. I also want to make a quick note after I looked at the back of some of the video, I realized that I got these red fingers. Um, if you noticed when I was working with the resist or the before and my first template, when I first had this, it was covered with pink marker. Well, all that pink marker is on my hand. That's why my fingers are kind of pink today. Should have rinsed that off, but, you know, I just wanted to get started today. So I'm just going to carefully make a cut into this. Trying not to cut my resist, because I want to use it as many times as possible. But even as careful as I was, I still made a cut. So the next time it's going to be a little, little shorter. So next time I try to use this, I'll be that much shorter on it. But you can see that much was curled up. So it really wanted to be worked some more. Um, but it was running out of room. So I'm going to just work this a couple different ways now. Um, and uh, do some more shrinking. Gets rid of some more water, and um, we'll see where the next step goes. All right, you can see how much it has shrunk already compared to the original template here now. And note, I've done all of this with no hot water. So far, this has all been just room temperature water that I had sitting in my crock with the soapy water. But now I'm gonna start working a little more with some more heat and try to get this closer to being finished. A lot of what I was working on as I went was trying to get this bottom to a point where it's going to be a bottom of a vessel. So I need to get that bottom to be flat. So all this extra material down here I need to work on and try to make it disappear or felt up more than the rest because I want this to be flat. One of the things I'll do for that this is where I'm going to take my palm washboard here and put that inside and that is going to also help me keep a shape while I rub it. Now you can see how floppy this thing is still. The goal is to work it until it is stiff enough to try to stand on its own. So I still have a ways to go before this has enough structure to become a solid vessel. That I can shape. Um, so I'm just going to keep plugging away but I've got my hot teapot now 
So I'm going to be adding a little bit of hot water in as I go. Um, because if it's starting to push water out of it, I want to put clear water in. It might as well be the hot because eventually I want to make sure I get all that soap out of it. So I'm going to just keep plugging away here and beating on it. All right, still plugging away at this. You can see it's starting to uh, stand a little more on its own now, getting a little closer. Now, I want to do a quick little part of the pre-felt lesson here. Now, if you remember, our pre-felt was two-sided. We had the dark green on the back and the varying greens on the front with some accent fibers. And as you can see here, that dark green is a little edge on the sides of all of these pre-felt pieces. But you'll also remember on one of the pre-felt pieces it was coming off, so I took it off. And you'll note that would be this one right here that has no outline to it. The other ones all have their outline to define them, but the one doesn't, and that's why it looks different than the others. Well, after some more just working it, kind of like I was doing in the time lapse before, um, just kind of working this bottom, rolling it some more on itself, you know, this kind of thing, adding a little bit of hot water now and then. I've got something that's got some good structure to it now. You can also kind of just work it from the inside, try to shape it as I go, try to work it towards the direction I want it to be. And uh, it's starting to become a vessel that will stand on its own. I'll just stand that up. All right, there it is. Now you can kind of see it a little better. So what I'm going to do now is bring it over to my sink and do some rinsing, um, some warm water. Put the water in, rinse it out, put the water in, rinse it out until I see no more suds or signs of suds because I want to make sure all my soap is out.
All right, I have something that I would consider a fairly firm vessel right now. I'm pretty happy with it. I've been doing for the most part here, besides after I got done the rinsing, was shaping. Trying to get it, I'm rubbing my hand on the inside, pulling out, pushing against the surfaces, trying to smooth it out the way I'd like to see it, checking it, making sure it's standing in something that doesn't look crooked. It'll stand at a couple different angles, but I want to make sure it doesn't look like it's going to fall over and make people nervous. That means adjusting that base. I got a nice belly to it all the way around. I kind of like that. Work on, just keep working the shaping for a while. If I want to do more with that, if there's something that doesn't seem to want to give, doesn't seem to want to stretch or sit right, I can give it some steam um, and try to soften that section up and work a little bit more. I can also play around with some areas like between these pre-felts where it's a little softer than where the pre-felts are and I could probably indent them if I wanted but I don't think I want to do that. I'm just going to try to make a smooth surface here. And one other aspect of making that a smooth surface is a little shaving sometimes helps out. So what I got here is a cheap single blade Bic razor buy them in packs of disposables and you can just run down this and take off the fuzziness give it a smoother edge unless you want that fuzziness it's up to you there shouldn't be too much fuzziness if you worked it enough but sometimes you get a little bit and it just sort of takes away the halo on the piece and makes it a little more questionable about what is that made out of. Because when you walk in, you don't always know, you know, yes, it's a felt store that I have here. It's a fiber store. But I actually had someone look at my pieces kind of going, well, it's kind of a primitive pottery there. That doesn't look, you know, and then he touched it. It's like, oh, that's fabric. I thought it was clay. <laughs> like there's only so many, so much I could do with the shaping and unlike clay. Because there's a point where I kind of lost control in the felting process of what the shape is going to be. Some of it's in the fiber layout. Some of it's in my initial form. But a lot, and some of it is in me just kind of manip, trying to manipulate it at the end into the shape I want it to be. There's some of the stuff I just sort of shaved off there. Checking it standing upright. And I can keep manipulating this for quite a while. But that's basically making a felted vessel. If I played with this top a little more, I could have done a flared out. If I had added some more fibers going this way, I could have had it close in more. There's lots of things you can do with your fiber direction in the process to give it different shaping. I really kind of worked the fibers kind of wrapping around as I was laying it out on this. Um, that gives it that big belly that I wanted. And then bring it in at the top. So there it is, a felted vessel. With resists and pre-felts on the outside. All right, here we are the next day. This vessel has now had uh, overnight to dry. So it's now lightweight again. Got most of the moisture out of it. And if we look close at the details of the pre-felt portion, you can see the edge outline from the back fat, um, color of that pre-felt on these sections. And then there's this section where I had torn off that back section and it gives you a different kind of crisp line, but without the outline. So take advantage of that if you want. No way you can see the difference. Now what I'm also going to show you here right now is different resists for different shapes. It's pretty basic, but this 
is the resist that I used for the vessel yesterday. And this is the resist I used on a vessel that I thought I was going to make a video on, but I lost most of my footage, so I had to start over. But it's the one that's in the preview vid photo of my pre-felt video. So this resist made that one. This resist made the big tall one. And a simple round little pot like this, rather than being on its side, I did the bottom and the top around the circle. And then just cut away in the middle to create an opening. Now, some of you may have smaller hands. If you have smaller hands, you can go for smaller openings than I can. On this one, I can make the neck only so narrow because that's about as small as I can get my hand inside to shape it. And I need to do that. If you have smaller hands, you can probably get a narrower neck on your objects. Well, I hope this video has been useful to you. I hope you're getting something out of it. And if you did, uh, please like and subscribe this video and my channel. And if you have a comment about felting, you have a comment about using resist, a comment about using pre-felts, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks.